Welcome everybody. This is our third episode in the hospitality industry seminar or webinar here. So thank you for joining us today. I'm Joel Silverman at Silverman Law Office. Excited to have you on board. If you can't tell I'm excited, then I don't know what to tell you. But I'm here anyways. I'm here to have some fun with this. So let's have some fun because today's webinar has two great topics. One is about opening your doors. The second one about violations. Great topic, but boy, it sucks to be there. So let's jump right into it. What does it take to get your doors open? Number one, you gotta get licensed. The last webinar was about licensing and about getting through that ugly process and how long it takes to get through it. Now you've, you're licensed or you have temporary authority, you can get into the doors and get things open. What does that mean? That means number one, you need a business plan right? You got to have everything laid out for your business. Number two, you have to start hiring your team. You hire your team how? You hire them for your why. You hire them for who they are. What is it that they bring to the table, not experience-wise, but their personality? You always hire for personality, not experience. The reason you do that is you can train to get experience. You can't train to get the right personalities in place. And once you get a bad apple in, it's gonna spoil the rest of the apple cart. So you don't wanna do that. Believe me, learn from me. I've been there, done that. Hired people for the wrong reasons because I was too busy, too much happening. I didn't have time to do all the interviews that were necessary. Do good interviews. I know it's tough, especially these days. In Montana, we're at under 3% unemployment. That makes it a challenge really hard to hire people when we're at that kind of unemployment rate. But take your time, find the right people, even if that means you're finding them from somebody else's team. Find the right people who believe in what you believe in and then you will have an amazing team behind you. So number two, your business plan slash cash flow. Make sure your cash flows match with your personal financial need. Make sure it matches with what your business needs are, right? Oftentimes when I see clients who go under, it's because they didn't listen to that single biggest lesson. They personally outspend their business. The, the statistics are, are pretty tight when it comes to how many businesses survive beyond five years. Literally 80%, and this is coming from the Small Business Administration, 80% of businesses go out of business in their first five years. Don't be part of that 80%, always be growing find the way to grow. So after you get your cash flow all lined out, personal and business, the next step is your floor plan. Your floor plan is instrumental to how your business is going to succeed. It affects the way people move in and out of your business, the way people will spend their money, how long they'll stay there. Floor plans run your world. And I so often see that people don't put enough thought into the floor plan. You walk into the door of your business and there's something in your way, right? Who wants to walk in, hidden object that's in their way, and then have to go around it? Let people flow into your business. Your floor plan's key. It also affects the way your employees move about. So you gotta satisfy both sides there. How your team can work itself into the way your customers are appreciating your product, right? So, now then. <clears throat> We've got to talk about your culture. Culture starts with you. It's real simple. You are your culture. And if you aren't living your culture, then neither is your team. So live it, breathe it, be honest with it. What is it that drives you? What is your why? Is it customer service? Is it money? Do you just want to rake in lots of money from your customers? Or do you want to provide them a phenomenal experience whether it's culinary, whether it's uh, an experience from the beverages they're gonna be drinking, is it the food that they're gonna be eating, or is it the products that they're just walking into your establishment to buy, right? Breweries, distilleries are massively successful at this. Why? Because you get all the smells. You walk into a brewery, you smell the hops and the barleys, you smell the fermentation process happening. It's almost as if you're living it. The best bars, when you walk in, there's an experience. There's an experience from the decor to the lighting, to everything around them, and then to the way they're treated. I had an amazing experience at a bar recently. First time it's ever happened. I walked in and I sat down 
at the bar and the bartender walks up and I hadn't been there but 20 seconds. The bartender says, hey, how's it going? And I said, it's going great. And they said, well, you're clearly not from here, right? And I said, no, I'm not. And so we start up this little bit of a conversation. He says, by the way, do you know this guy sitting next to you? And I said, no, why would I know him? He says, well, then let me introduce you. The whole point of it was their motto was, this is like drinking in your own house. You wouldn't let a stranger into your house, would you? He wasn't going to let you walk out of that bar without you knowing the people you're sitting next to. So he introduced me to the people on both sides of me. They introduced me to their friends that were with them. Before I knew it, I knew like 12 people in the bar and I was having a drink with them. And we were all asking where we all came from, what we were doing. You know, we had somebody from freaking Arkansas, for heaven's sakes, that all of a sudden was in this group because it created a community. Their philosophy of we want you to be like you're drinking at home. That was astounding how they lived it. So you gotta be able to do that, you gotta live it, breathe it, and you gotta hold your team accountable for it, right? Um, something I skipped on the financials, by the way, financials are the life's blood to your business. You've gotta understand your KPIs, your key performance indicators. Those KPIs are what drive your business. With today's point of sale systems, those POS systems are unbelievable. You can track how many items somebody's selling. If you've got a waiter or waitress and you know that they're supposed to sell on average two desserts per table a night and they're hitting one and a half, is that something you should react to? Absolutely, because it's a KPI. And you can then go talk to that waiter or waitress and say, hey, wait a second, why are you falling down in this area? Set those measurables, things that get measured, get done. If you aren't measuring things, then you aren't getting things done. You're just flying by the seat of your pants. And if you're successful, it's called luck. But I've still yet to meet a lucky, successful person. Everybody I've ever met who's successful wasn't because they won a lottery. They were successful because it was planned. What you plan is what you can make happen. So the last thing is start with the end in mind. Too many of us get into business, and I'm one, raise my hand on that. We get started in business, and all we're thinking about is, I need to make X dollars. I need to find a way to make X dollars. I've got a great product or a great service, but I need X dollars to keep my family alive, financially. The problem with that is, is we aren't thinking what's five years, 10 years down the road. You've got to start your business with the end in mind. If you've already been in business for years, it's not too late. You just have to start planning now. So think about what do you want life to be like? What do you want your business to be like when you are 65 or 70 and you want to retire? What is that supposed to look like and start building it today? That is the key to business success. It's always about planning, measuring with the end in mind. Now let's get to violations. Violations are the ugly duckling in this world. It is not easy to run a bar. It's not easy to run a brewery or distillery. And it's not easy when you've got the government just coming down your throat for whether it's paper violations or one of your bartenders or, or waiters, waitresses screws up and sells to a minor, right? Or they sell to somebody who may not appear intoxicated at that moment, but then they leave and they get in an accident. You're dealing in a dangerous substance. <clears throat> It makes life hard. I get it, I've been there, I've defended people on this. It's a challenge. So what needs to happen is your vigilance from the financial side also needs to be on your compliance side. You need to make sure you're following every step of the rules. You may not know all the rules. That can be what we're here for is also to educate you. Do you have catering reports? If you're catering, you gotta report it monthly whether you have catering or not, right? Are you testing your waiters and waitresses and bartenders on serving to minors or serving to intoxicated people, right? You have to be careful and you have to train your staff and constantly work with them. Even my clients who do it constantly, they still end up with violations because somebody gets in a hurry. That's going to happen. But then once you get the violation, give us a call. If you haven't talked to us before, we help people all over the state of Montana with liquor and gaming violations. We, they, they can be ugly, 
but we know everybody in the agencies, we know how to deal with it, and we can help. We can also help train your team so that these things don't happen. We can train you to train your team. We've done that before. We can help you with your financials. Don't end up with a financial violation. We, in our office, we call them paper violations. Why? Because all they are is something on paper, right? Concession agreements, lease agreements, financial violations. You get in a pickle and you stop paying your rent from your bar company to your real estate company. All of a sudden that creates an undisclosed ownership interest, even though you own both, doesn't matter from the state side, that's an undisclosed ownership interest. We can't have that for you. Give us a call if you're concerned about your financials. We can help you structure everything the right way to make it happen. So with that in mind, you also have to realize there's a progressive penalty structure behind the violations. If you get one violation from Department of Revenue, that may be a $250 or $500 fine. The second violation in a three-year period now becomes a $1,000 or $1,500 fine. The third violation is a guaranteed suspension time. And let me repeat that. Suspension. You have to close your doors and stop serving the public. How hard is that on your business if the Department of Revenue comes to you and says, oh, I'm sorry, you failed to report catering reports three times, therefore you have to be closed for 12 days. All for paperwork. You didn't put anybody in danger, paperwork. Or you end up with two paper violations and then a bartender screws up and you, they serve a minor in a sting. So now you got three violations in a three year period and they're looking for a 12 day suspension. Close your doors, you don't get to pay employees because you got no money coming in, everything's shut down. And the state doesn't care about that. All they care about is following what their rules are. So you got to be careful, especially if you've got one violation, boy, you better get hyper vigilant real fast about the way your team operates. Be careful, be careful about the way you operate financially too. We're here to help with that stuff. We're here to educate. We wanna make sure people are safe. Thank you for watching this webinar today. I've enjoyed talking to the camera, but you, and give us a call. We're gonna give you a special offer where if you mention to our team that you watched this webinar series, we're gonna give you 50% off on your initial consultation. So give us a call today, don't hesitate. We look forward to meeting with you and helping you and your family achieve everything you hope.